in the dark shadows, in the white cold. Fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes. The order of the Abracast. We are the brave and the bold. Hey, um, this is something a little bit different. Um, so for every Patreon subscriber or subscribe star subscriber at the $10 level, they get monthly phone time with me. And generally what I do is I, uh, I record the, um, phone conversations and I will post the first of them up on the main feed. So, uh, this is one of those phone conversations. Um, I hope you enjoy it. So if you don't enjoy, if you're like, I don't want to listen to this, that's fine. You're still going to get your episodes promised for, for the week, but just go ahead and uh, skip this one. If you're not interested in it, that's fine. It's fine with me. It's fine with them. It's cool. But, uh, it's just a way for me to get to know the people that are into the show. Uh, and you know, you go on these phone conversations with these, with these folks, um, every, month and you get, you get to learn fun stuff. You get to make friends with them and it's, it's a good time. It's fun. So that's what this episode is all about. If you want to skip it, go ahead. Uh, but you know, we'll be back on Friday and again on Sunday. So thank you. And, but I do hope you enjoy it. Some fun stuff does come out of these a lot, often, most of the time. The Abracast, a cult history, conspiracy, and violence. always like to ask <laughs> yeah no i i get that that makes sense <clears throat> cool man so what's going on with you oh well just trying to navigate this whole covid thing yeah um, you're surviving in the the lockdown yeah so far i i'm an essential worker so i uh you know i've been hard at it for throughout most of this yeah and uh it's just astonishing how much changes day to day and Man. How some people take it so seriously and others just not at all. It's really <laughs> yeah. interesting. The city. Yeah. Around these parts, um, as you might, you probably know, I'm in Pittsburgh. So the, uh, yep. we just, we just got re-locked down. Like they let us go for a little bit and then they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then they, put the mask, <laughs> yeah. they put the mask order back on and shifted everything down. And, and like there, people are about to, like sharpen their pitchforks and light their torches and go after our governor. Like I, he's, oh, I think he's done. Like, yeah, it is not well received here either. No. Um, they actually, I think they drew up legislation saying the mask is like, you legally have to wear it now. Yeah. And I'm in <laughs> Michigan. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, whenever, whenever anyone, joins at the ten dollar tier you know i talk like i owe them a phone call basically every, every month and i record them i only generally i only have published like the first call you know so it's funny like going okay. back listening to the ones from like three or four months ago and you're like oh my god like i have this great like audio diary of like what people are doing like all over the country oh yeah and, and how they've all been like de dealing with all this different um stuff just by doing just by doing these calls so yeah it's interesting yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting to hear good catalog yeah 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 it's like uh like some kind of dot like a like a audio diary or something um but yeah, yeah so i i do these calls just so i could get to uh interact with you guys and uh you know take some take critique or criticism or find out what i am doing okay what I'm doing right, that kind of stuff, generally just turns into just bullshitting. Like, we don't even talk about the show a, a lot of the time. 
So just to let you know where we're, okay. where we're kind of coming from. So, um, yeah, sure thing. So, I've heard a few of them. Yeah. So we've been, um, you and I have kind of been going back and forth for, for quite a while. I think that you jumped on board when I started doing the Lima or Crowley episodes. Is that, is that right? Yeah. That's what drew me in. I, I've always, I've always enjoyed the occult, and so there's certainly not not an abundance of podcasts on that subject, at least as far as that I've found. And I was happy to have stumbled upon you. And um, yeah, anytime Crowley's name uh, pops up, my ears perk up as well. So yeah, I think so- that's probably right around the time that I sent you a couple messages and. Yeah, um, so I know that you you had mentioned Diary of a Drug Fiend, which I haven't read yet. So uh, is that yeah. kind of just Crowley just doing like telling crazy drug stories or something? Um, sort of. It, it's a novel, okay. and I, you never you never know with Crowley like how much is true and how you know how I many liberties he's taken. But <laughs> it it I guess what most people seem to think about that book is that it's basically documenting his battle with cocaine and heroin mm-hmm. um and basically how he used uh well i won't spoil it but the <laughs> occult gets in <laughs> as it likely does yeah and um and it, you know it's very crowley ask but it's i don't know it's just kind of interesting it's it's like uh crowley meets the motley crew book you know yeah <laughs> pretty well, debaucherous they, and great yeah I think you mentioned that it, w- that it reminded you of um, Hunter Thompson, which I did. Like, I'm a big, gigantic Hunter Thompson yeah. fan. <clears throat> yeah, and me as well. Yeah, his his writing style, sort of that that choppy, but, um, yeah, it's hard to explain it, but, like, if you've read, you know, Gonzo or Fear and Love yeah. or that stuff, you know exactly that sort of cadence yeah, that yeah, he yeah, writes yeah. with. And, and Crowley seems to, seems to have a bit of that. Well, he's funny. I mean, I I don't hear people talk about how funny he is, but like I'll be reading, I'll be doing like a Libra Four episode, and I'll just stumble across what I'm pretty sure is just a joke, and I'm like, how come no one talks about how funny how funny Crowley is? Like, oh. yeah, he he was a trickster, you know, uh, yeah. almost above all. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that that definitely comes through. With, and I can't, John, I can't like I can't claim to be. Um, incredibly knowledgeable on Crowley. I find it fascinating. I read what I can, but some of that stuff is, is dense. <laughs> and it, yeah, it, it well, takes me a couple passes to get, to get it. Yeah. And there's a lot of it. I mean, he just wrote his ass <clears> off, <throat> but, um, but like, so in Libra four, I was reading this thing and he starts, he just starts talking about like, I can't remember the context of it. He starts talking about like, well, you don't expect to do this thing right the first time. And he's like, it, that would be akin of uh, somebody picking up a, <laughs> picking up, picking up a driver and hitting a hole in one at the first try. And you're like, Oh wait, shit, <laughs> right. is that a golf joke? And then you find like, I do a little bit of research and I'm like, Oh, he was a golf. Like he was a fucking golfer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, a real good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And you're I like, remember you... another reference that, I was just going to say, uh, I just imagined him with one of those hats with the little pom-poms on it and those fucking pants. Like, oh, God those willing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sure hope so. <laughs> I remember another golf reference that he made um, when he was talking about how science was trying to basically disprove, you know, the occult and magic and all that. And um, he, as a mathematician, said, well, I can mathematically prove it impossible for you to swing a club and hit a golf ball. <laughs> there's enough math, in, you know? It's like, all right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really funny. So um, uh, what was your, like, religious environment, like, when you were growing up? Were you were you brought up in a church, or what would that look like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. I'll, I'll give you the broad strokes of how I ended up where I'm at, I suppose. Um, I was I was brought up Catholic, not super strict, but we went we went to mass on Sundays and I, you know, went to catechism. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, your teens when you you you, you tend to kind of come online and you start to question things. Uh, but it was you know obviously was, you know fairly taboo to think that way you know and, and be a good Catholic boy. So I I tried to resist that that those thoughts. It, not unlike a Catholic, I suppose. But, um, 
<laughs> but then like, and, and you know, it, this was all a long time ago, but both of my parents took ill, like really like they were both diagnosed with lung cancer, uh, like a month apart. And, oh. and it, it was like, shit got bad, like real, you know, real bad. And, you know, so I'm like, you know, questioning everything. And I'm, I was angry with God. Um, and I remember going to a bookstore. I think I went to Media Play. I don't know if you guys have those out east, but it's basically a book CD store. Yeah, okay. And I'm like, I, <clears throat> yeah, something like that. And uh, I was like, I want to find like the most evil book that I can <laughs> find, you know, just to, you know, give a big fuck you, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and what I picked out was, you know, it turned out obviously to be, you know, quite the opposite, but it was uh, Modern Magic by Donald Michael Craig. Okay. And that is, uh, it, it, it was, it was that moment. And this is sounding very cliche and I realized that, but some liner notes from a tool record. Yeah. Yeah. That turned, that turned me on to ritual magic. I think the liner note said something to the effect of, uh, no true ritual magician has ever like sacrificed a human or drank goat's blood or it just listed off all these sort of right. misnomers. <laughs> and it said, it's yeah, basically yeah. just like, uh, a set of it's basically a way to un to unlock more of your brain's potential right and i always i you know that sounded fascinating to me too so it was, it was those two things and um yeah i was off to the races you know bought a tarot deck soon after that got into you know divination and some you know some light candle magic and you know stuff like that and sort of just kind of been you know chipping away at that yeah you know, so a number of years do you still claim your Catholicism at all, or are you? Is it totally gone? You think? I I don't see. I've I, I went through the whole anger thing, and then I went through the you know the, the phase where I was very full of myself, and I thought that everyone that believed in a dogmatic God was just they were idiots, and I was like so much smarter than them. Yeah. And as I got older, um, I tended to. I, I see the merit in in that belief and I know that it's necessary for a lot of people and where, whereas at one point I would have went out of my way to, you know, start arguments and have discussions and, you know, mm-hmm. try to prove, you know, my point and p- prove other people wrong. And I just like grew out of that shit. I'm like, this is, this is something that they, you know, they love and they need it. And it yeah. ho- hopefully makes them a better person. You know, who am I to stand in the way of that? Right. So I haven't like come to really, I mean, I know that, you know, the Bible, there's certain truths in it, but um, there's there's some fundamental points of Catholicism and Christianity that I just can't get on board with. And those are usually the key points that, you know, those are the ones that you have to believe in order to call yourself <laughs> a Catholic. So right. <laughs> I, I tend to cherry pick. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I think that... Uh, you know, I think that we really have a lot of the same experiences now. I mean, God f- forbid, you know, my parents didn't get sick or whatever, but like I, I went through a lot of those same phases where, you know, I was like pretty religious. And then I was like, I just showed up to kind of like try to make out with the chicks, you know, in like the the, <laughs> yeah. over, the overnights. And then it got to, um, you know, I reached this age where I was just like, this is all bullshit and you are all stupid. And like, I, I really <laughs> yeah. wrote, I really wrote that for a long time. And then, um, I, I don't think it was a tool album for me. I think it was Marilyn Manson. <laughs> I think it's what started <laughs> me. I think it's what's, I think, um, <clears throat> He had said something, and I I want to say it had something to do with the liner note too. Uh, uh, in Antichrist Superstar, the one of the live album or one of the live songs on Antichrist Superstar, yeah. he claimed was recorded like a year bef- a year after the album came out. And I was like, what is this all about? And I want to say it has something to do with Valentine's Day or something. Anyhow, I was reading this article where someone actually asked him about it. And he starts talking about the Kabbalah and like time oh, traveling, nice. time traveling inside your mind using the Kabbalah. And I was just like, what is this weird motherfucker talking about? And um, were you just fascinated I- though? Yeah, I was fascinated. I had already been like working on kind of like 101 stuff. Like I was already like on board with like the Masons 
have UFOs and they're actually secretly ruling ruling the world. So I, like that's where I was, you know. Um and I okay. I, yeah. I, I still I still remember like a lot of my my Bible stories and stuff. Like I never really lost track of that. And I I would sit up and like when I was in the army talk like Bible stuff with people, but I had a real limited understanding. I mean that was like the early nineties, you know what I mean? Um but yeah. yeah, so I'm like, what is this guy talking about? The Kabbalah. And then, uh, so I just started like looking into it. And I think that's really what got me, um, kind of, that's really what got me to where I am, you know, cause it's like, I, I was like at the X files level, I guess is where I would, what I would say, you know, and okay. then that kind of just took me ignition. It was like T minus, you know, three, two, one ignition. And uh, I really got started yeah. getting weird after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, that's how it works sometimes. Yeah, so I would what, go what to would you consider. Go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. What, what would I was just going to ask? What, what, what would you like consider yourself then? If, like if you had I, to put a label on it. I know that's hard. No. Um, well, I I've stopped trying to be exclusionary. Like. Um, I try like, like what you said, like you, you know, that there's fundamental truths in the, in the Bible. So I kind of am like, well, I could see fundamental truths almost everywhere. Like, you know, I, <laughs> I you know, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot and say like offhand, I totally disregard uh, the Quran. Like I, you know, <laughs> as well yeah, meaning as a lot of the people that try to interpret that stuff is. But um, as far as like the Western tradition, you know, uh, I can see a little bit everywhere and I try to think that maybe they're all like expressions of like the same kind of secret knowledge that's out there. But if you held a gun to my head and said, you know, you have to identify, I would probably say like, maybe I adhere to like some kind of Gnostic worldview. Um, I think that's probably okay. as pinpoint as I, I could get it, but um Okay. As you know, like I've been dabbling around with uh, ceremonial magic, like the last couple last yeah. couple months. Um, so I think that that stuff's you know really interesting. Um, and you know, uh, I've mentioned on the show a bunch of times that my dad was a Catholic and my mom was a Southern Baptist. So when I would go from Southern Baptist to like a Catholic environment, it seems so weird to me because of all the ceremony. You know, sure. so I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about that. Like, you know, cause you were talking about kind of ceremonial, uh, magic and, but that's something that you were plugged into as a growing up. Like, I mean, all that stuff is weird ceremonial magic, you know, all that Catholic mass is all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There, I, I did always and still do appreciate the ritual of it all. Um, I, I think there's something to, um, making an event, you know, out of it and having, um, well, ritual, um, you know, and like these, you know, these, these stages where, you know, now this happens and then this happens and having like physical, um, movements along with it and, and, um, you know, tools, you know, to, mm -hmm. uh, to wield during that. I've, I've always, you know, and you're, yeah, you're exactly right. Catholicism has a ton of that. And, um, um, maybe it did sort of, um, I guess groom me a little bit for you know some of the the ritual magic and stuff that I that I enjoy now. That, yeah, that makes it, total sense. Yeah, yeah, cuz it's like I mean coming from like an outside point of view just being able to peek in just like every other holiday or however it worked out, you know, you're just like wow, like the, look at these statues and like, you know, where the church, you know, my mom's church it was like, you know, guys in like goofy polyester suits you know like like uh sure. pastor larry pastor larry solomon you know and uh, um and then you right. go and you're like oh this guy's wearing like druid robes and he's got a big funny hat on and all this <laughs> stuff and uh yeah it's just like yeah. a difference between night and day and it's like well when you boil it down they're still kind of teaching this pretty much the same kind of message so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely. it's interesting it's strange there's so much division yeah. on, on that end of the of the, the whole thing too with all the, all the different, uh, you know, all the different religions that are, you know, like you said, fundamentally the same. Yeah. Like, it's just, you know, they get these, saying that. <laughs> yeah, well, they get these, just these points of, uh, you know, problem, problematic little points that they just can't get over. And I mean, rightly so, 
you know, there's, I, it, it would terrify me if there was only one big church, you know, uh, associated with the Western civilization, you know, like I'm just happy. With, yeah. Like, that would be unsettling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. There's, you know, there's voices for everybody, you know, like, uh, or there's messages for everybody out there. Yeah. That's nice. I, yeah, yeah. I, I do think it works for a lot of people and I'm, I'm glad to have that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, but it, it has like a utilitarian, a util, a, like a utility function too. You know, like history would be wildly different if the Catholic Church wasn't around. You know, we'd all be walking around. Oh, speaking, yeah. Pitch tune, probably. You know, um, I right, had to get yeah. off all that when we when we do the Crusades episodes and stuff. So it's like, oh boy, yeah. You know, um, I was on a a podcast like I don't know. This was a few years ago, but I found myself like defending the Catholic Church. You know, to a, a room full of like weirdos, and I'm like, no, no, like, you know, fine. You could say that they're fucked up and they do like all this weird stuff, but you know. The reason that we're speaking English right now, you know, and have the ability to like podcast and talk shit, you know, is because we're, you know, the caliphate eventually stopped, you know, like it didn't happen by itself. Right. Where would I find that podcast? Is that something you can, you can uh, expose? Oh, uh, uh, I, I don't, I'll have to think about it for a while. Like I said, it was a few oh, okay. years ago. Sorry to put it on the spot. Like, <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm just like, I just like to listen to that. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I must be in like some kind of alternate reality, me sitting here defending the Catholic Church. Um, <laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but I mean, so there is like a utility function to it. And also kind of like what we're seeing today, right? Like, um, you know, with like, uh, I, I did this episode about uh, intersectional ecumenicism, about collective salvation and you know i kind of tied it into like marxism and you know the oh. ch- the church <clears throat> is you know the christian the christian church is about personal salvation so i mean it's like uh it's like a if you look at it like from a political point of view it could be like a check against against marxism or like this uh counter uh, culture or this um, cancel culture, I guess what they're calling it nowadays, and like this BLM yeah, movement and yep. all this. You know, instead of yep. instead of group think, you know, it's more of like an individual self salvific uh, 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 event. You know, I think that you know there might be that might be another way to look at it, and that might be why they're keeping all they're trying to keep all the churches closed while this thing's going on too. I mean, not to get too conspiratorial, but. No, I, I enjoy that sort of thing, and it, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of parallels there. It's certainly, something to examine. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna change something just real quick because I wanted to ask you something. I've wanted to ask you this for a long time. Yeah, man. If I we can build it up, it's, now it's probably gonna sound silly, but <laughs> um, when <laughs> when I was searching around for like a cult podcast and stuff like that, it did happen upon Mark Passio, and I think you guys. I think he lives in PA as well. And I didn't know if you've had any experience with him or listened to him or any interaction with him. Um, the name sounds familiar, but I don't think so. I think someone else he, has told his, me. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, his, his, his whole thing was um, what on earth is happening. Was like the name of his podcast and show. He's like, he's really intense, like big into uh, a lot of conspiracies. Um, I mean, he was he was interesting. Um, still, as I presume, I haven't listened to him for a while. But I, I just wondered if you'd ever heard of him, and you know what your take might be. Oh no! It looks like he's coming out with a movie, uh, the science of nat- oh, really? natural law. Yeah. What is yeah? His whole law? thing is natural law. Yeah, it's um, it's a little bit cruelly asking that it's um, basically, you know, um, you're you're here for a purpose, and you know it whether you're aware of it or not. And sort of, you know, following that whole natural law is um, how you get it. And I, I, I could be messing that up. It's been a long time since I've heard him. But I remember when he was explaining it, I, I remember it, it sounding a little bit, um, um, a little bit like Crowley. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm punching it in now. I'm going to save it. I'm going to check it out. Oh, okay, cool. 
it's not the most compelling stuff in the world, but interesting. It was like yeah. one of one of the first podcasts I listened to that you know kind of you know kind of talked like like we do. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I'll, ch- I'll definitely check that out for sure. Um, okay. it, it's cool. It's yeah. It's even cooler if he's in PA. You know, I like that stuff too. Yeah, he might be in Philly. It seems like he might be in Philly, if I remember yeah. correctly. But <clears throat> at any rate. Oh, and I also wanted to thank you. I know I sent you a DM, but that whole uh, water of the art thing yeah. was so awesome to like watch to to watch all those videos of you like doing. Like, I really love that. Like the step oh. by step. Like this is what I'm doing, and like you know, whether it's visual. I mean, I I really appreciated that it was you know visual, and I know you can't do that with a podcast, but anytime that there's like a a step by step of like this is the ritual I'm choosing, this is why I chose this one, this is my objective this is how it would go. And I realize you can't like, you know, actually do the ritual and tell everyone what you're doing it for without, you know, completely diluting it. And it, you know, that that's not how that sort of thing works, but all that step-by-step stuff where it just breaks it down. I, I really like that. And it was yeah. a great gift and I thank you for it. Oh no, man. Thank you. I mean, I usually wait until the end, but you know, thank you for all your support and thank you for, you know, jumping on board and all that stuff. Like, you know, it really does. Uh, it makes me feel awesome on top of everything else, but it really does help me just with the the day to day stuff. And, you know, uh, it, those, those like bonus things are stuff that, you know, I, I want to do often, you know? Um, so yeah, that, I mean, maybe not that big, that was a pretty big one to just to start out with, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, and I hope, I hope I didn't come off as that. I was asking you for more gifts. I, Really no, 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 no. That I'd like to bear witness to it. Yeah, no, that's cool. The um, so yeah, okay. So I'll talk about it for a second. Um, so uh, the funnest one was like the first one where I, I like I had to wade. I didn't plan to get that far into the river, but the fucking jug wouldn't yeah. fill up. So like standing out there up to my <laughs> right. up to my knees, and the people were out there doing a picnic, and they're just looking at me like, "Why is this fucker out there like filling up this jug <laughs> with river water?" <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great yeah and then i was just like well i'm just gonna do like a step by step um on it so the idea was to do the water and then i'm gonna do i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna create a wand which the actual ceremony for that it's gonna be tomorrow i think yeah tomorrow cool um, i've been following and, that a bit as well that looks great yeah and then the next month is gonna be a a, a cup or a vessel um, I got a, yeah, I got like this brass or like, it's like a brass colored stainless steel thing that we're going to do a ceremony for. And then, like uh, maybe a then, pentacle eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it is. And then the sword will be next. Uh, we're going to do All a right, sword of the art. And then the last one, I, I was actually just trying to figure out like, how am I going to make a coin? Like, how am I going to do that in my studio? So it's going to be, right. it's going to be, it's going to be fun to figure out, but yeah, the, um, the wand one, the 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 sh- the craziest part so far, and it's pretty much done. I just got to do like the the prayers and the the ceremony part of it. But uh, the <laughs> the thing called for me to like get the branch at dawn, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my okay. god! So like I had to. We went. <laughs> I took my wife camping and we, I like scouted out the tree and I knew exactly where it was and all that stuff. But I got up like in the, like w- real early in the morning to go pee. And I would just about writ- written it off. I was like, I'm not going to get this branch. I'll just get it later. You know? And then I was like, well, I can't right. tell everybody that I lied. You know what I mean? I was like, I got to keep it real. Right. So I, I like, <laughs> I was hung, I was hung over. This is tired. I didn't sleep very well. And um, yeah. So I got the, the yeah. branch. Yeah. So yeah, it was a good time and it looks really cool. I don't know if, yeah. uh, if I turn, if From I turn I the, camp- the pictures, it, it looks great. Yeah, I don't know if you can see on the if I turn the camera on. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. So, oh, right, right now you're just a avatar. Just the, okay. Now. Yeah, sorry, but um, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, so that's been a fun. That's been a fun kind of experience, and everybody seemed to like the the water the water stuff. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was. It, do you suppose there's anybody? And I understand that you wanted to keep it like just for like the Patreon. But the Patreon site, to, and I'm probably doing something wrong, but it's a little cumbersome to, like, nap. Like, is there any chance, like, all those videos could be stitched together at some point and 
and you know put out somewhere. Uh, well, you know, you can just watch all of them all at once. Yeah. So, well, I'll tell you the secret. Um, they're all on my YouTube channel. They're just unlisted. So I don't know if you could go to my YouTube oh. channel and search for them, but they're not going to be like. Um, uh, I don't think they're searchable. So Patreon doesn't, um, they don't host the video themselves. So you have to provide a link to them. So I put them all on my YouTube channel, just unlisted. But, um, uh, okay. So I don't well, know. Probably I mean, be in your uploaded videos, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that if you, if you manually go through the feed, like the channel, I think you'll be able to see them in the order that they were listed. But if you just did a search for them, nothing would show up. I think that's the way it has to work. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll check but, uh, but yeah, but that Patreon was great to watch that. That was so cool. <laughs> yeah, but Patreon is it's not very user friendly. I in my opinion either. Learn more at abracast.com. Get bonus content by signing up for the mailing list. Get all that plus many exclusive episodes by supporting the show at patreon.com or subscribestar.com. Yeah, yeah, it's a little tough, but I mean it's a it's a great uh it's a great tool. Yeah. Um yeah, so that so there I just kind of laid out like what the cer- all the ceremonial magic stuff that I'm doing that that's why I needed to do the water first is because you need the water to do to like consecrate the rest of the the items. Oh, cool! Now, but uh, did the water? What did that come out? Come out of the Goetia? Um, it. I'm working mostly out of the Greater Key of Solomon, uh, with some okay. modifications. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, it's the go uh the. Greater key is considered part of the Goetia, um, but I okay. wanted to specify that I was using the greater key stuff. But I, um, for the water, I also use some stuff out of um, the Magus, the Celestial Intelligentsier. Okay, uh, I'm not familiar that, with that one. Yeah, that was written by Francis Barrett. Um, so I use some stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. So, yeah, but that, I mean, it, okay. it, it, it's been fun to do and it's funny. So let me ask you this about ritual, ritual magic or whatever, like, uh, sure. you know, you talk, you talk to some people like chaos magic is big nowadays, you know, um, you talk to some of the, some of those guys that do that kind of stuff or, or whatever in, you know, kind of like defending the ceremonial magic stuff and i likened it to like wrestling boots or like um like a a suit that you wear to an interview like does your interview okay. does your interview suit is it actually worth five hundred dollars you know you're like well no but it lets the motherfuckers know that you're serious about getting a job you know or like <laughs> <laughs> right yeah like, do you like do you, are are your wrestling boots actually worth 300 bucks no but it lets everyone in the locker room know that you give a fuck you know about what you're what you're doing and that's kind of the yeah, way that I yeah. think about uh, the like the rituals. Like, you, there's like a like the times are important and the dates are important, and you kind of go through those steps, you know, to to have some sort of to have some kind of structure to it. You know, like that's kind of the way yeah. that I look at it. Yeah, I would too, and I, I'd say the intention of it, um, just you know, all that attention to detail, um, <clears throat> gives it. I, I feel more intention, and uh, I think that that's that's part of what really pushes things along. That you know, focused on this one thing, and you know, if you gotta if you gotta get up at dawn to achieve it, then, <laughs> you know, so be it. That's just you know, you know, whatever the case may be. But yeah, I, I think that all those all that ritual and stuff. I think yeah, it, it yeah, I, I can't speak to like the whole chaos uh, stuff. I haven't really delved much into that because. Um, what I've found works and yeah. I really, really enjoy it. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm a little bit one dimensional when it comes to that, but um, yeah, it just, it, it, it works. And, and I like, again, I know I'm a broken record here, but I love the, the ritual point, you know, part of the part of it really propels me. Yeah. Cool. So, well, you were talking about candle magic too. Do you mind talking about that a, like a little bit? No, I don't mind at all. Okay. So, um, 
um, yeah. So can you kind of just do like an like an overview uh, of sort of like what it, what something would entail, like what some kind of operation would would entail with it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm at my bookshelf right now. I'm just going to see if I can find. I think it's a. Ah, uh, shit. I got it laying somewhere. But yeah, basically, um, like with with all the rituals, you. Um, I, I, I start by banishing. I, you know, lesser banishing ritual of pentagrams is where I start, and then um, from there, divination. Um, you know, consult the cards, find out if it's a good idea or not, and um, you know, obviously with with that sort of thing, it's not like should I or shouldn't I. It's more of what would be the outcome if I, you know, performed this ritual to achieve this goal. And if the cards seem to think it's a good idea, um, I usually use. Um, like pure essential oils and they're, you know, every oil like has some relationship to, you know, what it is you're after along with like, you know, the color of the candle. Um, you can have tarot cards that correspond, all these correspondences, um, you know, kind of feed into it. And basically once you have that oil, you um, dress the candle and that's basically starting from the middle of the candle with a little bit of oil in your fingers and moving out to each edge or each end rather. Uh -huh. And uh, get that all over there, and 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 while I'm doing that, I'm um, I'm discussing my intention. Uh, sometimes it's um, you know a quick little mantra, you know of you know what I'm what I'm hoping for, and then as you're doing that, that mantra grows and grows and grows, and then I tend to stand the candle up, light it, still having the mantra going, hand on either side of the candle, and then this is where you, I really start to focus and just pour all of that intention and all that energy into that candle until you can't stomach giving any more energy to this thing. <laughs> and, and oh, at, at that point, you know, a big, big clap of the hands and that seals the deal. You let that candle burn down and forget about it. Wow. Don't talk about it. Don't, don't even think about it. Just uh, let the, let the universe and, and all of that intention and all that focus, direct energy, take care of the rest. Cool. So, um, yeah. so, so my wife works with candles. Um, she's a, she's a Wiccan and she works with candles every once in a while. And, um, I, I had wondered that when I saw her herb collection. Yeah. 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 I, <laughs> I yeah, was like, I went, I went up to her studio and I'm like, I need to borrow some herbs. <laughs> <laughs> and she had just about Sorry, everything. Go ahead. Yeah, she had just about everything I needed. I only had to go out to get like two, two, uh, two separate things. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I I should do something with her. She's got a massive collection of gems and and uh, crystals and stones. Massive, oh, that's like, cool. yeah, like I should do something with that. Just kind of show it off a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, that would be cool she, to see. Yeah, she works, I think, probably mainly with the crystals and stuff, but I know that she does do um, candle work, uh, too. So that's interesting because, you know, um, her kind of school of thought, like with the, the Wiccan, like the kind of Wiccan system or whatever, is it's kind of, it doesn't have a system. It's, you know, you do what works right for you, you know? Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, so when you brought up doing the candle stuff, I was like, okay, well that you know that that's interesting, kind of like a different point point of view uh, uh, of it. Yeah, and like uh, one of the things I've one of the big takeaways that I've um, well taken away from the the whole like you call it ritual magic thing is that you know it's it's half science and it's half art. So uh, yeah, you know once if you can find a, an, an interesting little workaround, like not unlike you did with the. Um, the water of the art where you made the jar, you know, the, um, the sprinkler, the sprinkler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that was, that was brilliant. That was yeah. brilliant. And, and you know, that's, that's the artistic part of it. Yeah. I would love to take, um, credit for that, but actually that was my wife's, uh, idea. She was like, well, why don't you just put the stuff ah. in there and turn the jar into the sprinkler? And I was like, that's <laughs> yeah. <brilliant." laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, um, high five her for me if you don't. Yeah, mind, I, I thought that was great too. Yeah, I was like, she didn't even realize that she'd give me the breakthrough, and I was like, what? Like, I'm standing in the kitchen, I'm like, ah, like doing like a happy dance uh, about the whole thing. Um, oh, I'm sure. 
I, yeah. I loved it also. There was a brief exchange with uh, you and your wife. Uh, I think it was it was just one of the audio portions. Yeah, I think it was during the ritual itself. And uh, after it was all over, you're like, hey, I finished. And she was like so sweet. She's like, oh, well, how did it go? <laughs> Me and my, my wife and I both got a big bang out of that. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because uh, because of um, – because of we're on lockdown, she's working from home and her like little right. office is like right near my studio where I was doing it. So like the whole time I'm going over the whole, I'm doing all the prayers and I'm pronouncing all the names and stuff. And I'm just like imagining her upstairs, just shaking her head. Like, what is this guy doing? Praying to God <laughs> over the water. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, also one thing that I've gotten from you is I can't say God or Jesus without <laughs> like saying it like you do. <laughs> I have yeah. people that look at me like I am a lunatic. Yeah, I'm like so, that's all that su- that's all that Southern Baptist uh, stuff coming out of me. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. I uh, bet. By, by the power of a Jesus, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that checks out. Yeah, that's good stuff. The um, so uh, do you like? So I I have a feeling that those like the occult episodes are the ones that you like the most. Is that a fair kind of statement? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it okay. is. Um, I, I would certainly like to listen to more of them. I, you got a lot of content, my friend, and it's it's daunting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anytime I see something that I like, I I I, uh, I get into. But yeah, a lot a lot of the occult stuff is cool. Yeah. Um, I I'm drawing a blank right now as to like what ones I've specifically listened to, but I sure do enjoy it, and I I'm, I'm sure I'm grateful to, you know to have have it around. Oh, well, thank you. That's the, those kind words really just light me up, man. I, I really do appreciate it. And, you know, um, like I said before, without the supporters, the show wouldn't be nearly like what, what it is. So, um, you know, thank, thank you. <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh, all the listeners should thank you guys. And I try to, I try to bring that kind of out, like during the episodes too. Um, yeah. So is there sure. anything that you, you would like to see, you know, anything like, would you like to point me in some kind of direction? Like I actually got some alchemy stuff coming up pretty soon. Oh, that'd be interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah. Like the only thing I, I got a little, some notes here that I made, but I think I hit almost all of them. Um, yeah. And any time, like if, if you're ever inclined to just like, just break down a ritual and just like, you know, as if you're, as if you're, you know, explaining it to a four-year-old <laughs> that I, I would love that, you know, especially like Crowley stuff. Cause he's like so intense and everything is just packed full of so much symbology, but like anything that's just like, just breaking down a ritual. Exactly. If you do this, you do this, you do this. Here's why, here's what a few of these, you know, words of power mean. You know, I just, I, I, I would, I would love to hear some, some of that. Um, yeah. So the the thing with the the thing with the Thelema stuff, the Crowley business that I'm going through is um I'm trying to get through Liber Four. So the first couple books are all kind of like explaining the mythology and like the um this is the way that I'm interpreting it. You know, I just th- this is just me. Is the first couple books are mm-hmm. explaining like the, the mythology and kind of like the philosophy of it. And then I'm like in the middle of Lieber four right now, I'm actually having to take a break because I'm a little burned out on it. Um, it, But Lieber four is talking about all the technical stuff. Like what kind of stuff do you need? Like he talks about his version of the magic circle and like what needs to be in it. And he's talking about, you know, not liking the idea of a magic sword. It should just be a dagger. And like, he's going through all of these things. So once I get through four and I'm, and I move on to five, I think that he actually starts talking about rituals and stuff then. So I'll definitely keep that idea in my back pocket and kind of try, you know, as best as I can to kind of ta- tackle some of that stuff. Um, sure. Yeah. But it's just going to wind just, up being. Just... Sorry. Go yeah, ahead, I, was just, I was just going to say, it's just going to wind up being like my opinion or like what I, what I make of it, you know, but uh, you know, I'm just going through the, going through this stuff. So I'm not like trying to present yeah. myself with some kind of like a uh, Crowleyan authority or something. No, but like your opinion and your interpretation are why we tune in. 
Yeah, and well, it's in, that, that's, it's that's in, what we're here for. <laughs> well, it's interesting because there's actually there's actually an OTO thread down the street from me. Um, oh, really? And I've, and I've been there. Like they they do like some like uh, art gallery shows and they have like some open houses. So like I've been there and I checked out the ritual space and, you know, I kind of like walked around and I seen their little red book on the wall and I saw their version of the still of revelation and all that stuff, but they won't respond to any of my emails. Like, I don't know if they just don't take me seriously or they, they just don't want to get in into it or what, I don't know what the problem is, but I've asked them multiple times to have one of their, you know, spokespeople come on, come on the show to talk about it. Cause I would love just to sit there and pick a brain of a guy who actually, you know, uh, does these things. So, um, yeah, I was up there when that they were doing, cool. I was up there when they were doing a, a Gnostic mass one time, it was all real neat, you know? Huh. And it's like, uh, I bet. you know, yeah, they get in their their robes and they're standing there and they're like checkered floored, you know, like sacred space and all that stuff. And you're just like, ee, you know, yeah. it, gets, it gets you like charged <laughs> up a little bit. Yeah, that would oh, that would be so cool. And yeah. just to clarify, like I, I, I'm interested in, you know, the stuff that I use obviously is, you know, what we talked about, but any sort of like ritual or any, 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 all that stuff is fascinating to me. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I love, yeah. It certainly wouldn't just need to be, you know, Crowley or Telemi or, you know, whatever. Right, right. All no, I get cool. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's like, it's all different, you know, like you, it's even different from like the lesser key to the greater key, all that stuff. They change it all, all up, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, you know, and I guess it's just kind of like find the system that works for you maybe, or, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, well, who knows like why you choose the one that you the the one that you choose like the the Goetia stuff is real god specific. Like basically what you're doing is you're exposing yourself to demonic forces and then you're begging god to help you. <laughs> you know, like literally that's <laughs> yeah, right? that's what it's boiled down to. Um, you know, have, if, have you ever experienced have you ever had any success with the Goetia that you'd be willing to talk about? Um, no. No. Or any demons? <laughs> no, no um, it, it's it's all been pretty quiet on that front. Uh, but you know, I'm not out here like doing like doing it all the time. I did it once for like a Patreon episode. Um, I summoned Bereth, who is the rider on the red horse, uh, and uh, nothing really, nothing really out of the out of the uh, the ordinary happened. But when I went upstairs, my wife was like. Did you, you did you kill anything? Like, do you have any blood? Like, she's like, <laughs> double, she's like double checking my work. <laughs> nice. I just see her walking around counting all the cats, making sure everybody's accounted for. You know? <laughs> yeah, doing head count. <laughs> but I mean, if oh, that that's kind good. Of, it's good stuff. Yeah, if that kind of stuff, like, if the god stuff turns you off then you know then there's the then there's the crowleyan you know new it and uh harpocrates and um and, and all that stuff just waiting for you you know and it's like it's the same sure. amount of ceremony it's just slightly different or a made wildly different system i guess but yeah. uh something that i am going to get into yeah something i am going to get into pretty quickly is something that i don't really know a whole lot about i went out and i got a satanic bible and uh Oh um, no shit. Okay. Yeah, well, hold on. Uh I got them right here. I got a I got a satanic Bible and the satanic rituals by uh by LaVey. So I thought that this would be Oh uh, yeah. Fun it's to get into. To go to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it might be um you know, because we've been talking about spiritual warfare for quite a while. So I'm like, well, let's get back yeah. into this dark, you know, let's get back, let's get these angels out of here and let's get some of this dark shit back. <laughs> so that's yeah, I look, look forward to you. Yeah, right. Oh, that's you know, that'll be good. That'll be good pod there. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. man. So, um, yeah. So what else is going on? Like, what do you do for like, uh, entertainment? Um, well, I, I got a full-time gig as electrician. I teach boxing part-time. Oh, boxer. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch. Yeah, it's just for fitness. I mean, I'm not like a – I don't get in the ring anymore or anything like that. It's just it's just for – mostly just therapy now. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I'm a drummer in a band, two bands actually. Cool. Um, Heavy metal. My yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not so much. In, I, I used to be. Trust me. Like, I yeah. I, I used to be in some pretty, do some pretty heavy stuff. My my dad was in bands growing up, like a wedding band. And like every weekend of my childhood was at like some stranger's wedding reception. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> he'd, he'd haul up the whole family. We'd all go. It was great. But that's great. Yeah, mostly yeah. The, like, the music. Yep. Music. Uh, you know, can't really do much boxing with yeah. anyone now or, you know, training just, you know, because of where we're at. But, um, uh, great wife, a couple of bonus boys. Cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much me. It's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the boxing's interesting. I used to, I used to train professional wrestlers. Oh, right on. Yeah. So like the, um, the pro wrestlers. Yeah. So, um, when I went, so when I got out of art school, it was like right at the time when like the attitude era was huge. Right. And, uh, I was yeah. totally hooked. I was totally hooked. Um, growing up, Sweet. I didn't like, I didn't like professional wrestling at all. I was like, you could see them stomping their feet when they punch. Like I, my brain was like, I was, I just shut it down. I was like, I don't want to have anything to do with yeah. this. But after You're college, questioning phase. yeah. But after the army and after college or well, during college, I was all in on the wrestling. Like I just literally was like jammed right in. And, uh, I went and I found a professional wrestling training facility and I took my art portfolio there and I was like, Hey, you know, let me do some websites and some t-shirt designs and letterheads and business cards. And they were like, yeah, this is great. We really can't afford any of this though. And I'm like, I think we could probably work something out. So, um, I pretty much got a wrestling education for free, just doing some artwork for some. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. And then like, uh, I've, Go ahead. Yeah, I, and then I was able to turn that into a training gig. So uh, I would wrestle during, over the weekends, drive out here and there, wrestle during the week, and then I would do uh, training uh, like five, five, four or five nights a week. Like it literally was my life for a little bit. Like I, I was like, yes, this is what I'm going to uh, wind up doing. And not like I never thought I was going to make it big. Like I, my body type is just not like that. And I don't have the discipline to like, be like get gigantic or whatever but i just love like yeah. do, telling the stories you know like literally that's all it is yeah, the like, theatric. Just telling a story. yeah yeah um so that's good stuff too well like, i have uh, no I, idea why a picture of you in your wrestling get up is not your profile picture right now <laughs> the um uh <laughs> i really liked i really enjoyed training like i, I really enjoyed teaching like the uh the training people you know, and it's something that's pretty, you know, yeah. it, can, it can get pretty difficult. You know, I mean, it's not like, a, it's not like real life boxing or whatever, but like for some of those folks, it was like the most, it's, you know, that's the hardest thing they ever did in their life was get through wrestling school, you know? And it's like, yeah, well, you know, I had a little yeah. bit of part of it, I guess, you know? Yeah, that's super cool. I mean, and there's certainly something to be said about, you know, bearing witness to somebody getting better is something that they're really working hard at and, and being yeah. part of that. That's cool. Yeah, and it's something like uh, something that seems impossible. Like here, this is what a Hindu squat is. Now go do five hundred of them, and you're just like, "That's impossible. There's no way I can do that." And you're like, "Yeah, you're gonna do it. We're gonna get through it." You know? Um, yeah, it's oh, pretty cool. Man. Yeah, absolutely. How long ago yeah. was that? Uh, that oh, I started like in '98, I guess, and then I went from like '98 to. Um, I don't know, maybe 2003, maybe. And then I quit for a really long time. And then I, uh, uh, I did like a little bit of a comeback here, but I was just working with like one promotion and it was just to kind of like it, itch, you know, scratch the itch, you know? Um, sure. like I really, I didn't really take it super personally when I was wrestling, like, um, this last time, but yeah, I quit maybe like five or six years ago for good. Like my body is just like enough, dude, fuck. What are you doing to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but um, if you yeah if you go and dick around on my YouTube channel, you'll see some old wrestling stuff in there. I, I left a lot of that stuff up there. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, but like in the early the early times, like the early days, I was doing like hardcore like barbed wire matches and stuff. In um, oh wow, yeah, but this so time cut like, yourself with the glass and stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I mean that happens, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it. To me, it was like barbed wire because when I was in the army, I was a combat engineer, so I used barbed wire like all the time. And like, okay, yeah, and that and that was like a a thing in '90s wrestling was like bar like you know barbed wire baseball bats and you know barbed wire this and that. So I kind of like, I remember, yeah, yeah, I kind of like latched onto that for a while. But yeah, I mean, it was fun stuff, and like you, you get the we like the craziest stories out of like indie professional wrestling locker rooms, you know. Um, on yeah, that. it's just wild. Yeah. So, how long did you box for? Oh, it was brief. Like I, yeah. I, I started, I started quite a few years ago, but just doing it as fitness. Um, and you know, I got pretty good with the bag and stuff. And my, one of my trainers was like, "Hey, I got like this, um, this. Yeah, it's like a oh shit, was I'm I'm blanking on it, but it was like it, the event was called Put Cancer on the Ropes. It was to to raise money to fight cancer." And he's like, yeah, you should do this. And um, I was like, yeah, all right, cool. And, like, they had, like, some guy lined up, and he dropped out, and they were, like, looking for my opponent, looking for my opponent. And they they finally got back to me, and they're like, like, over over here in Michigan, there's this big casino called Gun Lake. Okay. And they're like, your opponent is, is the uh, head of security for Gun Lake Casino. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> this this should be interesting, and it, I was like quite a, I was quite a novice still at this point. Well, it, it, yeah. I still am, of course, but I, I didn't have much experience at all. So I met with this guy, and he's just built like a construction barrel. And you know, I'm talking. He just looks scary, you know. And yeah, I'm yeah. talking to him. And I'm all like, we're we're like, you know, we're we're not going to go in there, and we're not going to try to kill each other. We're just going to put on to get, you know, it's a good event, you know. We'll try to be interesting and make a good show of it, but you know we're not going to kill each other. I'm like, all right, yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> so I get in the ring with this guy, and I just I just throw one quick jab, and I landed it pretty squarely right in the nose, and like also just like a switch, just like cold dead shark eyes. <laughs> the guy like freaked out. And it was like coming at me like all these big overhand haymakers and shit, and I like oh, I did boy. not defend against that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, holy shit, you know. And it, he was rabbit punching me, like hit me in the back of the head when I was trying to, like, you know, squirrel underneath stuff. Oh man, it was, it was a nightmare. And afterwards, I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? Like we, like we had an agreement, you know. And I'm going to, I'm going to fight him all over again at this point. He's like, right. he's like, what are you talking? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, you, you freaked out in there. He's like, oh shit. I wonder uh, if that wasn't the case, man. As soon as he hit me, I just kind of went blank, and I don't remember anything. I'm like, okay. oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you weren't like cut out for this. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it, it wasn't long after that that I was like, okay, I, I'll stick to hitting the bag and hitting the focus mitts and training people. I, I'm I'm done fighting though. Yeah, the uh, I thought the way that was going to end was like the the beginning of Rocky two. Or the beginning of Rocky Three, you know, <laughs> where, <it's, laughs> where yeah. you gotta fight Thunderlips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, not the case as it turns out. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, man. So, um, so how long have you been playing drums? Oh man, my whole uh, tens and tens of years. I, um, your old man, I your old started... man teacher. No, actually, he was he played guitar. And oh, okay. For, for, I don't know where I got the, the drum gene, but that happened. And, you know, like uh, the drummer of his band, like gave me my, like gave me his little practice kit. And I think I got my first one at like, I was like probably nine. Oh, wow. And then I think by, by 13, I had my first band and I'm 45 now. And I've, I've been in bands ever since that day in, yeah. in one iteration or another. Yeah. I just, yeah. It just speaks to me. I love it so much. It's probably my favorite thing that I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's like one thing that I never, like, I kind of got forced to try to play saxophone in middle school and I, I never understood it. I could never read the, the sheet music. Uh, I was just awful at it anyways. Um, but when I, 
when I'm when I'm on my deathbed, it, that, that's going to be like one of two uh, regrets that I have. I'm going to be like, I wish that I would have d- done something in a fucking heavy metal band. Like, I wish I could have, you know, just did a like one of these like the guys who sound like Cookie Monster or something. Like, I could have maybe pulled something oh, yeah. like that off. <laughs> I think you think, could, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think the other one's going to be, I wish I would have tried, tried harder to be a stand up comic. Like, I think that, uh, I, oh, I yeah. Think, yeah, I think those are going to be like my two biggest re- regrets. And maybe it's cool that I'm thinking well, about dude, it now because it's, you know, it's not too late, I guess. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely I don't think, not. I mean, be, being in a band is hard and everything. And, you know, there's a lot of moving parts with everyone in it. But like doing stand up, I mean, you're funny. And, yeah. you know, you're not. <laughs> That doesn't sound like you, you know, have stage fright or anything. You you should go put together a couple of like two minutes or something to go to an open mic or something. Just do it. Sure, they're around there, right? Oh yeah, you got open mics everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. Like uh, Rodney Rodney Dangerfield didn't hit it big until he was like fifty. You know, so uh, I'm knocking on that door, right? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you and me both, man. <laughs> uh, all right, bro. Well, do you have anything else for me, or I? I don't think so. I, I, I did, like I say, I jotted down a few things. I think I hit them all, and it's been a pleasure. I can tell you that. Yeah. So, uh, which I, I at least try to do it every every month. So you know. Um, but it's not like mandatory, obviously. So, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people pass it up. Um, but, uh, I do try to make myself available. So, yeah. So at the beginning of next month, you know, I'll, uh, I'll shoot out another email and, you know, we'll bump into each other on messenger and, and stuff anyway. Sure. So, yeah. So, uh, I do want to thank you again for, for all your support and thanks for getting on here and talking some shit with me for a little bit. I do appreciate that. Yeah, you got. I'm happy to be a part of it, John. Thank you. Great. All right, man. So have a good rest of your evening. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something to say to, like, a drummer. Like, what, what would you, like, you know, pound them hard? You know, that sounds dirty. I don't want to <laughs> say that. I don't <laughs> so, I uh, just say... Maybe... Oh, go ahead. Uh, maybe, maybe may your stick hit true. How about that? Yeah. That's good. That's good. May your stick hit true, sir. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thanks, John. We'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah, good one. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Yeah, Thank you for listening to this episode. Send an email or visit us on social media to let us know what you think about this topic. And please remember to leave a five-star rate and review. Hey, did you learn something? Did you laugh? Supporting me is a way for you to be a part of the Abercast and ensure its growth and sustainability. It also means I can create a normal schedule for shows and bonus shows, as well as the exclusive fellow craft episodes. By supporting the show, you are not only a listener, but you are a part of the show. You supporting the show gives me a way to offer fun rewards as a thank you for showing your appreciation and support for our projects. Do you have an idea for a reward that you don't see? Let me know. My supporters are my partners. I currently pay for you to listen to the Abercast. Not only do I pay the hosting bills out of my own pocket, I volunteer my time and uh, talent to each and every episode of the Abercast. The price of books, the time and resources of reading and researching, the massive amounts of gin and tonic needed, the equipment it takes to record the shows, the time and resources it takes to create the bonus material, and the cost to maintain the internet presence. Is it worth your support? I don't know. I'm proud of the Abercast, and I feel like I'm improving all the time. In addition uh, to creating the show, that you dig and that you are excited about. I also have a full-time commitment and other obligations. So why financial support? All of the supporters help me focus my time in on the quality and development of the podcast. And what if you can't afford, you know, $1 or $3 or $10 or whatever a month? Believe me, I get that. 
There are many degrees of support, but if you can't support the show financially, please consider leaving a five-star rate and review on your preferred podcast app. And don't forget that you can sign into the mailing list and still unlock a lot of bonus content. Thank you. I cannot put into words how much it means to me that you listen to the show each time I post a new episode. Your feedback, support, and love of the stories that we talk about here is what keeps me going.